The price differences between Games Workshop miniatures are wild sometimes. Spiking bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from spikybits.com. In this video, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about some of the price, the, the wild price differences between similar items that are available across the Games Workshop lines and you know how there is potential for you to save hobby dollars you know when you need something for your army. So the thing that got me I guess on this whole topic recently was the new Mark VI Assault Squad for Horus, Horus Heresy that just came out. Now this is a $70 kit and it comes with 10 Legionnaire Space Marines which are redesigned, so they're actually shockingly bigger than uh, the, the original Firstborn Tactical Squads uh, from Space Marines, versus the Jump Pack Intercessors, which came out and, well, you could still kind of find them everywhere because, you know, I think in a lot of cases, folks might have just taken their old Assault Intercessors and either 3D printed or bought Jump Pack bits to put on these guys, which I'm gonna show you here in a second what we did. And, you know, there's ways to save hobby dollars there, of course. So what what makes one, I guess, kit worth more or, you know, one price point worth more than the other? Well, let's let's look at these, for example. So jumping over to the new Warhammer.com, we're taking a look at the Jump Pack Intercessor. So you get five models for $60, right? And so that's $15 a model for what is basically an Assault Intercessor um, on a rock with a jump pack bit, right? This kit uh, comprises, I believe it is, uh, four different sprues because they have two of the same sprue uh, duplicated twice. So that kind of gets you to that price point. So $15 each, but conversely, if you jump over to the Legion Assault Squad, which I just showed you at $70, this particular kit uh, it comes in at $7 a model, which is basically half the price of the Assault Intercessors. Now, um, you're probably like, hey man, this is beat to death already, but let's let's just break it down. Let's try to do it a little scientific. I mean, this isn't a laboratory and all I got is gut math, but sometimes gut math is the best math because that's all you have when you step up to the register. So this kit only comprises three sprues, believe it or not. You get two of the same sprue right here and this sprue uh, that contains the jump pack. So for $70, you get one less sprue, but five more guys for half the price point, which is pretty interesting. If you don't mind doing a, a little bit more converting, you can pick up the Assault Intercessor box that's been around for quite some time now and you get 10 models in here at a price point of $6 each, but they are the larger primary size. And um, it is four sprues, just like the uh, jump kit too, for $10 less. And then you can couple that with any uh, bits out there uh, that, you, that you might want, like uh, this pack here that we actually sell from Type 4 Designs, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. You can get 10 of these for $34.99 and still have $25 left over than buying two of the Assault uh, Jump Intercessor box sets. Now here's the guy that started this whole thought process here, and we're gonna take a look at some other miniatures too, from like big monsters, creatures to tanks. There's actually a shocking amount of examples out there. So you've got this guy, and he looks great. I mean, he's a jumpy boy on a, a tactical rock, and he looks dynamic, and he looks cool. The styling is very neat, and that is a very cool looking jump pack, right? So you got that guy. And then, if you really want to, like I said, you can buy some Assault Intercessors, and well, they're pretty much the same. I mean, print out some or buy some jump pack bits, just like I showed you right there. Very, very cool, very much about the same. And you can even put them on, you know, some bases that have a little bit of texture on them. And then you're good to go. I mean, these literally look the same and you would save $25, you know, new on sprue basically buying this guy over here. As we just showed you, now you're looking at these horse heresy guys that just came out. And yeah, I know they look kind of small in this picture, but they're not quite as small as Firstborn. And when you compare these two guys just kind of standing there because they're basic assault troops, they don't look that dissimilar to be quite honest with you. I mean, the size of the weapons is a little over-exaggerated compared to the more realistic styling of this assault marine right here. 
but man, I don't know. Like this, this jump pack would even look good on an assault intercessor. I feel like so. Although their styling is a little bit more, I guess, uh, exaggerated, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But you can pretty much pick your poison here. I mean, fifteen dollars a miniature, six dollars a miniature plus bits, so it ends up being about nine dollars a miniature, give or take. And then. You got this guy here that would cost you roughly seven dollars a miniature and you're you're good to go out the door now what is it does it matter when you go to a games workshop official tournament well there's really as far as games workshop official stuff i guess you only got the us opens right so then you pretty much just have to kind of ask your local game store or your to um, wherever you might be going like what is okay i mean technically these are all on the same size base so, and they're all about the same height. So a dude with a jump pack is a dude with a jump pack in my book, but obviously, yes, still ask your tournament organizer. So here's some other bangers I just noticed or slash thought of. So the Lehman Rust Battle Tank is $65 now, but what's really cool about this is that it comes with all of the options now. So you can make all eight tanks and not have to buy two separate kits. But what's even more hilarious is that you get both the tops and two sets of turrets, but only one set of tracks. So if you can somehow get the bits for two different sets of tracks and a bottom, you can actually make <laughs> two full tanks now which is kind of crazy to be quite honest with you. These used to, well, I remember when these cost like, I think when they first came out about 15 years ago, they were about $50 each. So, you know, over time, Games Workshop does tend to combine uh, multiple variant kits into one single kit. Yes, looking at you, Bainplay. But the thing I wanted to point out here is this is only through Spruce. Recently, they just came out with a new tank that is also three Spruce. But the price is a little bit higher. Here's the Rogaldorn Battle Tank, and they were able to keep it on three sprues. I was kind of worried it was going to be a lot more than $100. And I think the reason is because they left that huge gap in the bottom, because there isn't a whole lot of space here on these three sprues uh, to put a bottom plate. So while they cut out the bottom plate, they might have done us all a solid because this kit could have been a lot more um, when you compare it to things that are similar size like a land raider and etc now there really isn't any way to game the system um as far as the the lehman or the rogal dorn goes but i did just want to point out that it's the same amount of sprues as the lehman russ but it's 35 dollars more Jumping uh, genres and I guess uh, subtypes uh, from vehicles to monsters, you got the Trigon. And the Trigon was super dope also about 15 years ago when it came out. It kind of made the jump from Forge World to GW Plastic. And at the time, it was quite expensive, Forge World. But this guy in plastic, while not quite as detailed as a resin kit, is still pretty dope and makes, you know, two different versions. Oh, they don't show it here, but he does make the Moloch too. Um, this kit is only two sprues, and you can tell this is from a time when they didn't quite optimize the sprues maybe as much as they could these days. So two sprues for $90, and then you got this little guy now, the Norn Emissary, which is also temporarily out of stock, which kind of seems to be a theme with uh, new armies from Games Workshop, right? So this guy here just came out. It is a bit, well, let's see. It's on about the same size base. I actually don't know what size base it's on. Oh, that's the 105 oval. So this guy, let's see if we can figure out what size base it is actually on. Oh, uh, it's a hundred millimeter round. So it's actually a smaller size base, but it will be wider because it's a hundred millimeters round. Whereas the 105 oval, I think is 105 by 60 millimeters. Either way, this kit is only three sprues as well, but as you can see, it's $40 more. Now there really isn't a way to game this guy, except for maybe on our, on the assembly where you can actually still make both the variants, which would be a little bit harder with the Moloch and such. And we show you how to do it on our unbox and build video, but it's just kind of something to keep in mind that I think in a lot of cases, the cost might and versus the retail price of these things might not line up across things like infantry, monstrous creatures, vehicles, or even their role in your army. 
So I think in a lot of cases, what it boils down to is not only the amount of material in the kit from Games Workshop, but also what role it has in the particular faction's army, right? So yeah, sometimes manufacturing costs come into play, like things like, you know, ginormous titans and things, and for Thunderhawks, right? They could never be something that, you know, might be in a small two, $300 box, but what they can be is a larger boutique resin kit as we're seeing four drills slowly become just for small one-off things and not for whole range items. But then another consideration in the pricing perhaps is how many copies of things you're gonna need in your army. Cause we saw with like Termagants and Hormagants, they are a lot lower in price than something like Space Marine Intercessors because we've seen a lot of Tyranid lists in 10th edition 40K has like 140 models in the list. And could you imagine a cost on 140 primary space marines? Like it might be unattainable for a lot of people. It might be back in the Warhammer fantasy era with like blocks of hordes and things. But I think Games Workshop knows what the intended purpose of the kit is, what the costs, the manufacturing costs of the kits, because these sprues cost a lot to tool up. And sometimes they can work the system like we saw with the assault squads where you had two of the same sprue in there times two that cuts down on your cost too. So they're able to kind of game the system. So while to us, we can only speculate what this type of thing might be, to them, it makes a lot of sense. However, with gamers being gamers and GW's latest trend of pretty much being out of stock of just about everything for a, a new release in a lot of cases well we know there's other alternatives out there whether it comes to uh you know respectable kind of alternatives slash proxies for kids like stuff like these obliteration hulks from pop goes the monkey because well it's really hard to get obliterators right now and gw while gw did re-release them uh they weren't very affordable with a two-pack you know and uh what was it the venom crawler coming in at I think 80 or $85, uh, direct order only of course. So there are ways to get the things out there and still be respectable to your opponents or do like we just showed with the assault, you know, jumpy boys. One jumpy boy is kind of a jumpy boy. It all depends on what costs you're comfortable with. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. Similar Games Workshop units with not similar prices, I suppose. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments about, well, I guess kind of the pricing you pay for different types of units and what you've had to do to kind of finish out your army, perhaps, uh, whether it came to proxies or 3D printing or just buying kits to represent other kits or maybe you just got a good deal on something. We'd like to definitely hear about it. Spiky bits.